Hello, I'm Karen from the Needlefelter.com. Today I'd like to share with you how I made an adult emperor penguin. I began by making an armature. I used 18 gauge aluminum wire for the majority of the armature and I used 24 gauge craft wire to create the tiny toes and claws. I added a blob of hot glue to each of the penguin's hips. This just helps strengthen the legs. And the final step on the armature was bending the tail wire back up toward the body. This helped create a tripod for the sculpture to rest on. Emperor penguins have really interesting feet and I needed to figure out how to recreate these with wool. I decided to wrap each individual toe with black merino top coat. I melted a wax product called Swax from Serafina Fiber Art, and once it was liquid, I mixed some powdered black pigment into it. I added tiny bits of the wax mixture to the tip of each toe using a silicone tipped color shaper. I let it cool for a second or two and then shaped each claw with my fingers. Here's a close up of the Emperor Penguin Swax Claws. To create the look of that gray textured skin that the emperor penguin's feet have, I chose a house carded bat from Serafina in the color elephant. With thin strips of the bat, I wrapped each toe. I pushed the toes together and began wrapping around the foot, creating a heel, an ankle, and the lower part of the leg and I felted this pretty firmly so that it gave the penguin sculpture a stable base. And here's a look at the final feet. I really like the way that the claws turned out. The next step was core wool. I began by wrapping the hips and the legs, and I used my sketch of the penguin to measure my progress with the core wool. I just kept building it up until my penguin was about the same size as the sketch. Then I cut a small piece of the 24 gauge craft wire, folded it in half, and glued that into the head. And I wrapped the base of that with core wool, just to reinforce the beak. I chose to make this emperor penguin standing straight up with his beak facing forward to emphasize the beautiful symmetry of their plumage. Because the penguin's markings are so distinctive, I wanted to draw a pattern before I started felting it. So I used an air erase marker to give me a guide when I was felting in the color. And then I used black merino top and white merino top to basically fill in the body and the head. I built up the beak with a little bit of black merino and I added glass eyes. For the penguin's flippers, I drew a quick pattern on a piece of cardstock and cut that out. And I decided to try using some merino pre-felt that I had on hand. I cut one layer of the pre-felt, but it was too thin. So in the end, I ended up using two layers for each flipper. I felted those together and then I added them to the penguin's body. And here's my finished penguin. The final penguin measures about six inches tall. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks for watching.